and I can name them. He was first a man of God, second a loving husband, and third a loving father. And everything else that he did came after those first three things. He loved his life, and he loved living each and every day, and that's how he operated with everything. Um, he was a jokester, a trickster, and uh, a great dad who uh, taught his children how to work and play. In 4, 2012, he writes, This is Easter Sunday. It has been a wonderful weekend. We've rounded up Dad's cows and branded. All of my family and a lot of the extended family were there. It was very rewarding to ride with my dad, my brother Guy, my daughters, Tian and Catriel, my nieces and my nephews. My daughters can carry their own weight. They're becoming good riders and have good judgment in working livestock. My heart is filled with joy and gratitude as I watch them run their horses through the brush and the trees, cutting cows. Danielle Catriel with her dark hair, and Tian with her blonde hair flowing behind them. As a father, I am blessed beyond measure. After branding, Jeanette and I rode around the old ranch house, and I pointed out all the old points of the homestead. And as we rode around, we watched all the families and the little children doing the Easter egg hunt. Mom and Dad's posterity has grown greatly. The joy and happiness as all of the families interact and work together was wonderful to see. It just shows you that his first priority in life was his family. And uh, we are proud grandparents of 19 and five more on the way this year. <laughs> One day, uh, four of my daughters were pregnant at the time of his murder, and there was a little bit of sadness at the thought that he wasn't going to be able to play with them. And then we remembered, hello, he's in heaven with playing with them now. So he has the opportunity of preparing them before they come here. They might not remember Grandpa, but, but he's there. Okay, journal entry. Three of 2012, as Tara talked about his evolution of his own education, here it is in 2012. This is the start of a new journal in the year 2012. My name is Robert Lavoie Finnecum and I'm 51 years old. I'm a father of 11 children and my wife is Jeanette Finnecum. The world I grew up in is rapidly changing. I was born in this choice land of the Amer United States of America. This has been a choice land and a noble country. In the more than 230 years of her existence, the country has been a standard of freedom throughout the world. I have lived to see her reach a pinnacle of wealth that has never been known in the history of the world. God raised up noble men who laid the foundations of a free government. The constitution which they laid down was inspired of heaven for the protection of man's God-given liberties. For almost a hundred years, evil and conspiring men have sought to destroy those liberties for their own power and gain. With sweet words of honey laced with poison, they have lied to us. Professing care and concern for the working man and the downtrodden, they have enacted laws that breach the safeguards enacted by our Constitution. The politicians violate their oath to protect and defend the Constitution. That was the beginning of that particular journal. And as he continued to study, you heard through Tara's presentation where he had to make choices for himself as he learned more and he wanted to be true to his principles. Again, he, he loved this country. He loved being a father and a husband and a grandpa. He loved the people that he met along the way. In 2013, he wrote, he wrote a book, Only by Blood and Suffering Regaining Lost Freedom. And I remember the day that he was arguing with, with the publisher about the title. <laughs> he said, oh, they'll never buy that book because it's 
too, um, it's, it's too harsh of a title. They need to name it just Jake, the main character, Jake's War. And my husband said, no, it has to say that. Nobody. <laughs> we didn't realize two, two years later that his blood would be some of the blood spilt defending our freedom. Right, that he did write was conceived in a way because he wanted to be able to teach about freedom, about the lost freedoms in a story where people would understand and be able to relate to. And so that's why he wrote this book. And I have um, a comment from a reader here. A major theme of the book is that the people we each are before the collapse will be the people we are the day after the collapse. So spend your time now being the people you want to be. It's about preparing your children, teaching them about faith, hard work, justice, and freedom. LaVoy's personal knowledge of the joy and love within a family is very enviable leaving you with wanting to spend more time doing what you love and with who you love, inspiring you not to waste any time. I thought that was such a kind remark from the reader, but that is what he was trying to do, was to teach, but also to inspire you to, to do and to remember what really is important in life, um, your family our liberties, this constitution that was God-given. We need to stand. You know, it's, it's, it's been difficult for us. We've been kind of just thrust into this. But I'm grateful for the opportunity that I have to grow and learn because I did not do the study that my husband did. I'm playing catch-up. But I'm honored to be able to stand and bear my witness of how important this country is, how important the Constitution is, and how important it is that we stand, even though it's hard, scary, difficult, but nonetheless, how we need to stand or we will be without our liberty. Um, I have... reading little books uh, along the way, trying to catch up, like I said. Um, this writer is writing as if it was the founder speaking to us today. It's very interesting um, hearing them talk to me in the way he has written it. But he asked this question, each generation, and perhaps especially yours, must answer Mr. Jefferson's question. Can the liberties of a nation be thought secure when we have removed their only firm basis, a conviction in the minds of the people that these liberties are the gift of God? So I ask you to think about that because I think we need to go back to understanding that God is involved in all things, and especially in our Constitution and in this country. And if we remove God and Jesus Christ from all of the things we're involved in on a day-to-day -day basis from our children being taught, we're going to have an immoral society, one that does not know or understand what liberty really means. And so I pray that we will look back to our roots, have the courage to stand, and as my husband said to me as I was leaving Oregon, he says, Jeanette, take courage. Stand and remember that God is in charge. Amen. 
again, thank you so much for having us, and um, I am grateful to have been here, and I love the green. If I could just take all that home to Arizona with me, oh my goodness. <laughs> it is such a different, but God's country is so vast and so diverse in its beauty, but every place has its beauty, and I'm so grateful to have been here to see this, and thank you again. <laughs>